going. Right, good. Thanks. Visual time? Yeah. Susan, what do you say? Thank you for the lift. Right. Morning, Mr. Rowan. Morning. No manners, that one. Another big shoot tomorrow, I gather, Mr. Rollins. Aye, last of season. All the big wigs. Morning, ladies. There's been a break in at Moston's. Do you want me to give you a lift down? Yeah. Then he got an arm in and opened it, walked over my desk, jumped down, crossed over to Till. But they didn't get into it? No, they couldn't. All they got was money from this Bernardo's box. Was there much in it? Just a few, Bob. It's got to be the same person who did the pub yesterday, hasn't it? It looks like it. And they didn't get anything there, so George says. So, I mean, what's the point? Hey, that's what I want to know. Mr. Rohn, come off up road, will you, and take a look at my van? Somebody's broken into it during night. Excuse me. Right, lad. Let's get that feed down to the birds. I'll be out to shoot tomorrow. What's he doing up here? Right, Ventus. I want this place completely spring cleaned. Windows washed, shelves tidied, desks polished, and all that rubbish there either tidied up or got rid of. What? You want me to do that? Why me? Because you're the one that makes all the bloody mess. But... No buts. He's bound to call in. I'm not having him see this station looking like this. Ah, Rowan, I want you on duty round the Ashfordley estate all day tomorrow. Why? The assistant chief constable of the North Riding, Mr James MacLeod, will be in your area tomorrow, Rowan, shooting on the Ashfordley estate. But... No buts. What's wrong with you two? He's a very important man. He'll be watching us. He'll be taking note of everything. And I want you and Bellamy out there, looking smart, making a good impression. Right? Well, I'm sorry, Sarge. That won't be possible. I've had two more break-ins overnight. Well, that's three in two days. I know, Sarge. What exactly is going on? I don't know, Sarge. Then I suggest you find out. Because when Mr. McLeod arrives tomorrow, I want him to discover a well-oiled machine with no squeaks. Do I make myself clear? Hey, I 
thought I said clean the vehicles. You lazy boy. Well, I have done, Dad. Are you trying to shame me in front of his lordship's guests? Wash the insides, like I said. And mind those dogs. That bloody lad. Inside of that Land Rover was filthy. Go easy on him, Matt. He's washed them down once already. Yeah. Could have fooled me. Well, no one can do it to your standard. At least he's trying. How's Susan now? Still in bed, poor love. School holidays and all. Right. Call the doctor. Matt, she doesn't want the doctor. I said call her! Look, love. It's not like Susan now to be poorly, is it? I'll be worried sick all day if we don't get to the bottom of it. Go on. Call her. Hello, Kate. Is that you? You're early today, aren't you? I just thought I'd catch up on some paperwork before surgery. Wow. Do I pass muster? Absolutely. How do you keep the socks up? Ah, trick of the trade. Garters. You'll get varicose veins. Mm. What about the jacket, then? Yeah? Belong to my father. Look at that. You don't get tailoring like that nowadays. I only hope that the old gun and I can still shoot straight. Well, I don't. Eh? Alex, where's the sport in taking pot shots at tame birds? Hitting the damn things, you silly girl. It's not as easy as it looks, you know. Mm? I, I thought you were a country girl. I can still be a country girl and take a view on blood sports. Yeah. Saved by the bell. Hello? Yeah? Hold on, it's for you. Hello? I'll pop over now, Mrs. Rawlings. So much for the paperwork. <laughs> Right, I'm off. Up to the estate. Check all is well. Okay, Sarge. And Ventress? Yes, Sarge. Get that ash off your tunic. Yes, Sarge. <laughs> well, thanks for coming, Dr. Rowan. You're welcome, Mr. Rawlings. Will you go on in? Yes. Thanks. Bye. Bye, Brian. What's up with Susan, Chris? Here's Dr. Rowan for you. Hello, Susan. Mama said I didn't need a doctor. I'll be downstairs. I'm all right, Dr. Rowan, honestly. Let me just take a look at you. Your mum told me you've been sick. How many times? Three. When? Just after I went to bed. And did you have anything unusual to eat or drink yesterday? No. It's just a bug going around school. Everybody's at it. Open your mouth. You've been drinking, haven't you? No. I can smell it on your breath. I haven't. Oh, come on, that's why you were sick. Look, you don't need to hide it from me. We've all made mistakes. Please, don't tell my parents. I've learnt my lesson, you know, and I won't do that again in a hurry. All right. By the way, the best cure for a hangover is to drink lots of water and get some fresh air. I'll get up and help my dad then. That'll do the trick.
Can I help you, Constable? Sergeant Blayton. Ashfordley Police. I'm just making sure everything's going smoothly. There's so many important people in the district, we uh, like to keep a close eye on things. Naturally. So, when's everyone coming out, then? They've come out. Been and gone. Been and gone. Damn. What's your game, Claude? Hey, there you are. I'm just doing a bit of bird watching. Bird watching? Hey, there you are. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll look, I've got, I've got the book and everything, all, all, all the set. <laughs> you know, I mean, every, every man needs a knobby, doesn't he? You, you want to get yourself one, one that takes you on long journeys. Is the dog bird watching and all then? Well, tell for it, don't tell daft. I, I, I can't leave him at home, though, can I? I mean, he's a bit like your Sergeant Blaketon, you know. When he don't know where I am or what I'm up to, he, he pines a lot. Well, I've got Blaketon on my back, so you just behave yourself, all right? Any sign of a cloud? Uh, no, Sarge. So you haven't seen him, then? Not yet. Ventress! Are those crumbs I can see on your desk? That's everything in, sir. Excellent day of shooting, Rawlings. Right, most of the guns are staying overnight, so bring their birds up to the house after breakfast. Except for Dr Ferrenby. He can't come for dinner, so uh, take his brace up now. And as it's the last shoot of the season, bring all your lads up for a drink when you're finished. That's it. Well, then. Let's get ourselves spruced up, then. <laughs> well, the bag's 25% up on last season, which I think is a very creditable achievement. <laughs> Thank you, sir. We had a good day shooting, which we haven't had for a very long time. Do you think any more about Goldfinger? My dad wouldn't let me. Well, I don't mean in the evening or anything. How about the afternoon showing after school? What about Monday? Please. I can't. Susan? How are you feeling now, love? Much better, thanks. Uh, I think you ought to get off home all the same. Get yourself an early night. Be right for school in the morning. All right. Shall I walk you back? No, thanks. I'll be all right. Good night, Susan. Good night. Leave her alone, will you? She doesn't need you wasting her time. Make us a cup of tea. Please. Well, I'll get it. It's probably Mrs. King's baby. Nick! It's Matt Rawlings! There's been a break in at the hall. Three hundred and fifteen birds that were in here. Three hundred and fifteen! Stolen! I just can't believe it. Well, I don't need to tell you how embarrassing this is. I've guests up at the hall expecting to take home their birds after breakfast. Yes, Your Lordship, I appreciate that. One of whom, Sergeant Blaketon, is your boss. Yes, my lord. I want the whole thing kept absolutely quiet. Do you understand? Yes, my lord. With me, Rawlings. Brilliant. Well, it's not my thing, Sarge. I thought I told you to keep an eye on things, instead of which you produced a crime wave right under the nose of the assistant chief constable. Well, this looks hardly in the same league as the other break in, Sarge. If this ever comes out, we're going to knock a complete bunch of Charlies. 
Right, let's go and pick him up. Who? The guilty party. How many times do I have to tell you? I bought them for me dinner. Four for your dinner. Ah, well, there's no telling them, is there? I mean, they're all legs and feathers. Alfred can eat two of them. And why you think I want 300 of the damn things, I don't know. You, you seem to forget. I'm a man of means now, Sergeant Blaketon. I don't have to piddle about with trifles. You were seen, Greengrass, by at least four people, including a policeman, hanging about those woods yesterday. I'm being falsely accused. You know that, Mr Ronan. And I'm not standing for it. Now, if you've got no tells to say, you might as well clear off, or I shall make an official complaint to your upper echelon. All right, Greengrass. If that's the way you want it, there's no rush. We know you took them, you see. So it's only a matter of time. Stay there, son. I won't get your breakfast. How many? 315. I mean, on that scale, it'd be a wholesale job. You need a van to move them. What's all this? Has anyone offered us any pheasants? Not that I've heard of. Well, I don't think we can help you, Nick. Sorry. Well, if you do hear of anything, let me know, eh? Thanks for the tea. Are you sure I can't get you any breakfast? No, thanks. See ya. See ya. I've just done a stock tea. Have you moved a spare bottle of gin from under the bar? No. Then I think we're a bottle short. Could have been stolen in our breaking. Right, love, how'd you get? I'm in a tearing hurry. Dad, don't fetch me tonight, cos I'll be back late. What? Mum said it was OK. I'm going to see the James Bond film after school with Carol. Well, how are you getting home? Taxi. Carol's mum's giving us the money. Oh, is she now? Yeah. You go. Thanks. And Susan. And for the lift. Aye. Be back in time to do your homework now, won't you? All right, lad. Let's get those birds up that hall before his lordship goes completely spare. And mind those guns. Put them out of sight. Hi, Susan. Hi. Uh, can I offer you one of my favourite uh, digestive biscuits, my lord? <coughs> they are chocolate. No, thank you. Uh, would, the, uh, would the would the doggy like one too? No, Blake, and the doggy would not like one. Do get on with it. Yes, my lord. Oh, well, I'm happy to say, my lord, we already have a definite suspect. It's just a matter of uh, checking his outlets, and we should be able to nail him. Really? Yes, my lord. Uh, by the way, my lord, what did the assistant chief constable make of it all? He didn't know. None of them did. Ah. Uh, they got their pheasants after breakfast, went home none the wiser. Sent my keeper out first thing to shoot some replacements. So, uh, he's gone home, has he, my lord? Who? Yeah. The assistant chief constable. Yes. Why, are you expecting to see him? Oh, uh, no, 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 not at all. Look, Blaketon, be doing me a favour if you scale down your inquiry. Scale it down, my lord? Yeah. My guests have gone home happy. I'd rather things stayed that way. I don't want to stand up in court as a witness over this matter. But you wouldn't have to, my lord. Nor any of my staff. I mean, we'd all look ridiculous. So, I will not be supporting any charges brought, understood? Let's just bury the incident, shall we? As you wish, my lord. What are you going on about, Greengrass? I might as well be talking to myself. That's exactly what I'm talking about. I want to see Blaketon now, himself. 
Ah, just the man I want to see. Shut it, Greenbrass. I beg your pardon. This way, my lord. Oh, my lord. Sorry, sorry. All right. Hold on. Nice to see you. Oh, yes, my lord, my lord. It's just the same. It's prime example. One law for the rich, another for the poor. And which one are you, Greengrass? I've not made my mind up yet. I'm in transit. Do you have something to tell me? Yes, I do have something to tell you, as it happens. I've been burgled. I've had 70 pounds stolen out of a tin. Not only that, the tin, the tin and all. And I've paid me rates this year, so I want some service. And I want to know what you're going to do about it. Oh, very convenient. What do they call it? A diversionary tactic? Uh, but, but what? Pull the other one, Greengrass. I know your game, and I know that you took those pheasants. And Tris Bellamy took him out. Do oh, they? God. Hey, I'm the one with the oh, complaint. Yeah, Dr. Farrenby. Oh, oh, yes, oh, yes. Very it's always the same here, isn't it? Always as soon as I come with oh, the complaint. Thank you. Yes. Bye bye. <laughs> Can I help you, Constable? Yeah, those pheasants, Mr. Francis. Hi. Where'd you get them from? Mr. Blair. Could you tell me his name, please? No. He's just a bloke who passes by. I couldn't tell you what his name is. Well, some pheasants have gone missing from the Ashfordley estate. Oh, I. Well, that's always happening, isn't it? Well, not on this scale, Mr. Francis, no. Well, uh, I'm sorry I can't help you, Constable. I mean, trouble is, one pheasant looks just like another, doesn't it? And they don't exactly come with the names and addresses on, do they? Yeah, all right. Thanks a lot, Mr. Francis. Hey, Jude, don't make it bad. Take a sad song and make it better. Remember to let her into your heart. Then you can start to make it better. Afternoon, Nick. Well, if it isn't our roving constable, our man in Aidensfield. Sorry? Aidensfield, the crime capital of Yorkshire. Sarge, I've been out all day looking for ruddy pheasants. Aye, all these unsolved crimes on your patch. And now we have a poor Mr. Greengrass. Eh? Had a whole lot of cash nicked. Tin with 70 pounds in. So he says. I don't believe a word of it. Oh, I thought it seemed genuine. I fear some sort of plot to discredit the force, Rowan. Centred on your patch. Make us a nice cup of tea. No, Mr. Rowan. I reckon those pheasants are miles away by now. London or somewhere. Well, Lord Ashfordley wants us to let the matter rest. My sergeant thinks that Greengrass had a hand in it. Aye. And if he did, I'll get to hear about it sooner or later. Not that you'll ever be able to pin it on him. Far too canny. Hello, love it. Nice film. Yeah, it was fab. Hello, Mr. Rowan. What did you see? Goldfinger? Yeah, have you seen it? Yeah, Kate and I went last Saturday. Oh. What about that bit where they painted her all over in gold paint, eh? Mum, I've heaps of homework. May I take my tea up to my room, please? If you like. You go on up, Sue. I'll bring it. Susan? What do you say to your brother? Thanks. And two sugars in that tea, mind. Cheeky monkey. <laughs> She's our clever one, Mr. Rowan. Yeah. I've got 
to get on with my own work, Chris. Okay. Mm -hmm. You awake? No. Can't sleep. Try counting pheasants. Five thefts in four days, and all on my patch. Nick, it's three o'clock in the morning. There was the pub, the garage, the butcher's van, those pheasants on Ashfordley Estate, and their green grass is 70 quid. So is it the same person involved or what? I don't believe this. Dr. Rowan, thank God you've come. Susan's taken very poorly. She won't let us near her. It might be better if you wait downstairs. She said it would be nothing. She said it wouldn't hurt. No, please, don't. don't. Oh, no. The surgeon's on his way now. She's lost a lot of blood, and they may have to do a DNC. I don't understand. Matt. Susan's had an abortion, Mr. Rawlings, and it's gone badly wrong. I want the person who did this brought to book, and if the girl's not well enough to tell us who it was, we'll get the boyfriend in. Happen we can charge him with procuring an abortion. Her parents say she didn't have any boyfriend, Sarge. Well, she must have confided in someone. A school chum, a girlfriend. Find them. Are we going to charge Susan Rawlings? That's not up to us. That's up to the DPP. But the one we need to find is the one who did it. Right? It's too soon. All we need is a name. I do it myself, but I'm not allowed in. Please, Kate. I won't promise anything. How are you feeling? All right. Will I be put in prison? Nothing's going to happen to you. All anyone wants is for you to get better. Susan, we need to find the person who made you so ill. Could you tell me who it was? It's important. It's not telling tales. It's preventing the same thing happening to someone else who might not be so lucky. Please, Susan. Look, if you don't feel up to talking about it, would you let me speak to your boyfriend? No. Telling you about it won't bring the baby back, will it? I'm sorry. That's the last time I'm doing anything like that, even for your Sergeant Blayton. Did you get her name? Nick, she's had an operation. She's lost a baby. She's shocked. She's upset. So you stick to your job and I'll stick to mine. So, yesterday morning. She went to school as usual. Matt took her to the bus. She seemed quite cheerful. We were that careful with her, Mr. Rowan. Always knew exactly where she was. 
Never allowed her to stay out late. That's why we can't understand it. So she went to school, and after school she went to the pictures. I don't believe she was pregnant. There must have been a mistake. Matt, she was three months. Well, why didn't she tell us then? I mean, she's not got a boyfriend. Oh, we've racked our brains, Mr Rowan, honestly. Did you know of anyone, Chris? If she were courting, we'd know about it. And that's the finish of it. No, Mr Rowan. Someone forced himself on her. She was too frightened to tell us. It's the only explanation. Well, if I could get my hands on him. And she had no access to any money? Nothing tucked away in the post office, anything like that? I gave her what she needed. Has anything gone missing from the house recently? No, she wouldn't do that, Mr Rowan. That would be stealing. She had no boyfriend and no money. She was only a school kid. OK, let's get back to yesterday. And what time did she get back from the pictures? Half past six. You were here. And how did she get home? Taxi. Dan Halcombe. Right. Well, that should be all for now, thank you. Do you mind if I look in her room? Uh, no. I'll take you up. It's not Susan we're after, Mr Rawlings. It's the person who did the abortion. Now, don't just sit there. Go and get the wood in. Excuse the mess. this under the bed. She must have been trying to get rid of the baby. Don't tell Matt. Does your sister ever confide in you? No. Anything, Chris, however unimportant it might seem. I told you, I don't know anything. Did you ever see her chatting to anyone or meeting anyone? No. Has she borrowed any money off you recently? No. Have you noticed anything unusual about her behaviour over the last few weeks? You know, who she spoke to, where she went, anything at all? I can't help you. Aye, oh, I remember Monday evening. Up to a cottage, that estate there. Do you remember where you picked her up from? No, I'll have that down in the book. Hold on. They didn't look much like one to criminals to me, though. Sounded like, like two mice. She had a friend with her, did she? Hold on. Here we are. This is the one. 22 Arcadia Avenue. Ah, young lad. Francis's boy. I dropped him off at Aidan's Field first, then I took her on up to Keeper's Place. Well, thanks very much, Mr Halcom. Afternoon, Constable. Is your son at home? Should be, why? I need to speak to him. What about? I need to speak to him in private. Oh, well, you'd best go in, then. He'll be up in his room. Hello, Richard. All right. I've come to talk to you about Susan Rawlings. You've heard she's in hospital, I suppose. What's up with her? You sure you can't tell me that, Richard? It's yours. Thanks, sister. Bye. Well? She's running a temperature. An infection. 
Well, antibiotics can deal with that in the short term. It's the after effects we have to worry about. Why did she do it? I don't suppose she thought she had any option. Call me old-fashioned if you like, but it seems to me there was reason in all those old virtues, including chastity before marriage. Oh, come on. Girls have been getting pregnant since time immemorial. In that case, they must accept the consequences. That's a bit harsh, isn't it? You can't hold the clock back, Alex. It's going to be legalised sooner or later. Well, if it is, it'll be a very bad thing. I'm sorry, I seem to do nothing but have arguments with people today. Kate. A lot of these girls were my old patients. Abortion. I'd just like to know who's doing it. Me too. Is this the tin? Yeah, it, it's a coronation tea caddy, that, you know. My mum gave me it. I never thought of you as being sentimental, Claude. No, oh, well, there's lots of things you never thought about me being in the constable. I don't just want the tin back, you know. I've got a sentimental attachment for what we're in it and all. What are you doing here? Claude, can I have a word with you? Look, Lord, you and me are pals, right? Now, God knows what my lad's been up to, but as far as I can see, he's more likely to fly to Moon than get a lass in family way. But the police seem very definite, and your tin were found in his bedroom, so things are looking bad for him. Look, I'm sorry that he broke into your house, and I'll give him a right good hiding when I get him home. But, well, we can't have him, uh, ending up in court now, can we? I mean, what if I was to give you the money? Uh, yes, yes, yeah. Fair, very fair. Come on. Now, uh, Mr Greengrass has identified it. You stole it from his hen house on Saturday night? No. What was it doing in your bedroom? Come on, son. What did you do with the cash that was in it? I've told you there were no cash. All right. Let's just start again from another angle, shall we? How much did you have to pay Mrs Gillett? Fifty pounds, a hundred? You do realise you can be charged with procuring an abortion. What? When you and Susan discovered she was pregnant, you needed cash and you stole it from Greengrass. I don't know what you're talking about. Mr Rawlings. Your son said I'd find you here. Well, we've made quite a lot of progress. We think we know who the boyfriend is and who carried out the termination. And where they got the money to pay for it from. It's just a matter of tying up a few loose ends and getting Susan to confirm what we found out. That won't be necessary. Sorry? Can you see? She won't talk about it. Quite right, Sue. I don't think you quite understand. We need Susan's help to charge the woman with this abortion. Oh, I understand, Mr. Rowan. But Susan would like the case dropped. Thanks all the same. Yes? Mrs. Gillett? Yes? PC Rowan. May I come in, please? Of course. Yes, of course, I know her. Dear little girl. And clever, too. I believe her daddy's very proud of her. She had an abortion a few days ago, Mrs Gillett. Did you know that? Oh, good heavens. No, I didn't. On Thursday. She's been in hospital ever since. Oh, dear. Now, look, Mrs Gillett. We know you were a midwife. We also know that Susan Rawlings came here on the evening she had her abortion. Now, I put it to you, you carried out that abortion. No! The facts speak for themselves, Mrs Gillett. We know she came here. Well, yes, I don't deny it, Constable. She had a problem and she wanted some advice. What sort of problem? 
Oh, well, that would be betraying a confidence. If you're right and she did have an abortion that day, it was done somewhere else. That's all I can say. Marvellous, isn't it? You try and do your best, and just when you think you're getting somewhere, everyone backs off. Even you. Don't start that again. I want this sort of thing stopped just as much as you do. We know who the abortionist is. Fat lot of good it did us. I've just been to see her and she denies everything. There's no way I can prove it without Susan and she won't cooperate. So who is it? A Mrs Gillett. Ex-midwife. Don't worry about me. I'll pop round the chip shop. You'd better come in. Is it about Susan Rawlings? It's all right, Mrs. Gillett. She's recovering. Oh, thank God. Thank God for that. I've been so ever so worried since that constable came round. We know that it was you that did it, Edie. Police can't prove it, they hardly ever can, and Susan's not going to talk, but we know. Why do you do it? After all those years of delivering babies, what do you want to do it for? A friend asked me to help her daughter. They were desperate. And I thought, well, why not? If I don't do it, they'll find someone else, someone less qualified. And that was that. Word gets around. I thought I was doing some good. Good? You nearly killed her. You punctured the uterine wall. Oh, no. It's got to stop, Mrs Gillett. Rowan's little crime wave is the perfect example of how our hands are tied without the cooperation of the public. Romeo and Juliet fall in love. One thing leads to another, and Juliet gets pregnant. They're both at school. They don't tell their mums and dads, and abortion seems the only solution. So, Romeo, alias Richard Francis, the butcher's son, being a decent lad, agrees to provide the money. The abortion is carried out, thanks to our Mrs Gillett, but unfortunately, she bungles it, and Juliet, alias Susan Rawlings, the gamekeeper's daughter, ends up in hospital. Now, we get involved, and what happens? Nothing! Nobody wants to talk to us. Why? Because they've all got too much to hide, that's why. We are confronted by a wall of silence. That's very well put, Sarge. It's like listening to Sherlock Holmes. Susan, come in. How are you? All right. Would you like a cup of tea? Oh, no, thanks. I'll sit down. I wanted to ask if you would give this to your husband. It's the money I stole out of Mr Greengrass's biscuit tin. You stole? Yeah. And this is for Mr Mostyn. Two and eleven pence out of the Bernardas box. And this is for Mr Ward at the pub. I stole that and all. But I thought Richard was the uh, one... Richard had nothing to do with any of it, Dr Rowan. It was just that he was waiting for me outside Mrs Gillett's that day. He follows me around, you see. I had to give him a lift back in the taxi and Mr Greengrass's tin room my satchel. So I gave it to him to throw away and the silly fool must have kept it. I never told him anything. I see. I've got to go away. If Mr Rowan wants to question me, I'll be at my auntie's in Harrogate. I thought it might help if I gave everything back. It's all there. I've got to go now. How long will you be away for? 
I'm not coming back. What? Me dad don't know yet. Mum will tell him when I've gone. Susan, there's no need for you to run away. I know it's been traumatic, but it's over now. Over and done with. No. It isn't. It is. You have to start looking ahead. Think about passing your A-levels, going to college. When you become a doctor, you take an oath, don't you, never to repeat what a patient says? Yes. Susan, if there's something you want to tell me, it'll go no further, I promise. Not even to a policeman husband? Not even to a policeman husband. It's Chris. Chris. It rim that stole the pheasants, you see, to get the money for me. Never tell my dad, will you? He'll go mad. He'd kill him. Of course I won't tell him. But I still don't understand why you have to go away. For Chris. All his life is having my dad running him down and making him out to be a fool. I hate it. Chris is a far better person than I am. But nobody else seems to see it. And that's why I've got to go away. To give him a chance. Why not stay here and help him? I can't. I only make things worse. You don't understand, do you? He was the father. If I fell in love with you, would you promise to be true and help me understand? Cause I've been in love before and I found that love was more than just holding hands. Take me to station, Chris. She did the break-ins, Nick, and she wants to give back the things she stole. So Richard was innocent? Not even a boyfriend, just a lad who had a crush on her. So that's Greengrass's money back, is it? Mm-hmm. I'll have to give it back to him, I suppose. What do you mean? Well, I reckon he's already had it back once from Richard's dad. So he's doubled it. The old rogue. Morning, you two. I was just coming down to invite you to dinner. You can help me eat my pheasants. We'd love to. <laughs> 